The salt marshes of Parker River National Wildlife Refuge are part of the largest salt marsh system north of Long Island Sound. This biologically rich ecosystem has played an important historical role as a hunting and fishing resource. As you travel the marsh in our sneak boat, you are sharing the experience of long ago New Englanders who used these low profile boats as floating hunting blinds. Today, our sneak boat provides a front row seat for observing the marsh's wildlife. You're bound to hear about the little piping plover when you visit Parker River National Wildlife Refuge, an active sand-colored shorebird that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been working hard to restore from its threatened status. It's a special species, and Parker River has a very special role in the recovery effort. Your visit to the refuge will call for an added measure of respect for this imperiled bird of the beaches because its nesting areas are very sensitive. Here's one of the best vantage points you'll ever get to see the life of the piping plover, or plover, depending upon where you live. Among the flocks of busy shorebirds, it's easy to miss one special species, the piping plover. Piping plovers were once a common sight along the Atlantic seaboard, but the middle of the 20th century saw a dramatic drop in their numbers. Coastal development was destroying their nesting sites, increasing human disturbance, and bringing an influx of predators. In 1986, the piping plover was listed as threatened under the Federal Endangered Species Act, allowing resources to be devoted to its protection and recovery. After wintering on the southeast coast of the U.S., piping plovers fly north each spring to breed. The beaches at Parker River National Wildlife Refuge provide them with precious nesting sites, relatively free from human disturbance. Each nest is a simple depression in the sand. The female lays a speckled egg every other day until there is a total clutch of four. The parent birds are easily scared off the nest, leaving the eggs exposed to the elements and to predators. For the species to rebound, as many eggs as possible must survive the four-week incubation period, so the piping plover nests are managed and monitored in several ways. To prevent disturbance, most of the refuge beach is closed to visitors during the nesting season. Volunteer plover wardens help to ensure compliance and tell the public about the piping plover recovery program. Exclosures are placed around the nests to protect them from coyotes, raccoons, gulls, and other predators. Persistent predators are trapped and removed. Throughout the nesting season, refuge biologists survey the beach, counting plovers, nests, and eggs, and watching for signs of predator activity. Once hatched, the piping plover chicks are active and somewhat independent, scurrying around the beach looking for insects and small crustaceans but it will be another four weeks before they can fly. Until then, the chicks are still vulnerable to predators and human interference. 
Each egg, each chick, each adult is considered a vital step on the road to restoring the piping plover population. Please do your part to help the piping plover. Ever hung out in a salt marsh? When you visit Parker River National Wildlife Refuge, you'll be treated to a diversity of natural habitats, from sandy beaches and dunes, to bog swamps and meandering creeks and rivers. Salt marshes are among the most productive places for birds and fish, so if you're looking for wildlife, a salt marsh is a good place to start. Here's what the folks at Parker River are doing to conserve the largest collection of Atlantic Coast salt marshes north of Long Island Sound. Sparkling salt marshes, sunlit dunes and beaches, peaceful freshwater wetlands. These varied habitats make up more than 4,600 acres of Parker River National Wildlife Refuge. For all their natural beauty, each habitat has been shaped by human activity. The salt marsh is scarred with drainage ditches, relics of a time when farmers wanted this land to grow salt hay and people lived in dread of the diseases carried by mosquitoes. Coastal development has destroyed some important wildlife habitat on the barrier island. And exotic plants and animals, introduced by accident or by design for a variety of reasons, have altered the fine balance of these ecosystems, threatening our native species. Today we recognize that salt marshes are a vital and productive habitat for fish, birds, and many other creatures. As part of the largest salt marsh system north of Long Island Sound, the salt marsh at Parker River National Wildlife Refuge is especially important. As scientific knowledge has advanced, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has developed habitat management practices that are designed to correct the mistakes of the past and restore nature's balance. At Parker River National Wildlife Refuge, the marshes are being restored in partnership with the Northeast Massachusetts Mosquito Control and Wetland Management District. Small pools, known as salt pans, are being formed by plugging the ditches with low berms. Incoming tidewater is trapped in a shallow depression behind each berm, creating a salt pan. The salt pans are then connected with small, winding ditches, creating ideal habitat for small fish. And the idea is that the fish would be able to travel from the, in between the salt pans using these ditches and they'll be able to eat the mosquito larvae so it's kind of a natural control and we're hoping to move away from the chemical spraying that's happening now on the refuge. The salt pans also attract populations of crabs, shrimp, insects, and other creatures, all of which provide food for other wildlife including shorebirds, raccoons, and even coyotes. A scientific study is measuring the success of the restoration work. We're actually part of a larger study that's going on in the Northeast. There's about 10 refuges um, up and down the Atlantic coast that's restoring salt marshes with similar techniques like we are. And we're all collecting the same data. And at the end of three years, all the data is sent to a central location. And we look at whether or not the, the restoration is having the effects that we're hoping it will. 